This clip will introduce you to basic matrix notation and to some very basic matrix operations. So matrices are really a little bit like spreadsheet, spreadsheets like containers for a lot of numbers. So here we will actually not use a lot of numbers, only six, but you will hopefully see how this generalizes. So let's call this collection of numbers capital X or big X. It has two rows and three columns. So altogether there are six elements. Uh, a little bit of important notation, we call N here the number of rows and M the number of columns. So these are two and three respectively. So at this stage this is really nothing else but a spreadsheet. We shall also indicate how we describe this matrix uh, or an alternative way of describing this matrix matrix is by calling a typical element a typical element x subscript ij where the i and j tell us in which row i and in which column j our particular value is so x12 would be the element in the first row and into in the second column so these i and j indices go to n and m respectively. So this is sort of a very general specification for matrices. We will have to deal with some special matrices, or here I will introduce two in particular. Firstly, what is called a null matrix, and that is basically what it says. It's a matrix full of nulls. So here, full of zeros. So here we have in particular a 2 by 3 null matrix, but it could have any dimension. The second special matrix I want to introduce is what we call the identity matrix. So let me give you an example. This is an identity matrix on the diagonal 1 and zeros everywhere else. So in this particular case, that is a 3 by 3 identity matrix. And identity matrix matrices have to be square matrices, meaning that the number of rows equals the number of columns. So here the dimension would be 3 by 3. So null matrices and identity matrices are important special matrices. We also introduced another property of matrices here of some matrices. Some matrices are what we call square matrices and as just mentioned that means they have the same number of rows and columns. n is equal to m and we would then call them n by n or m by m matrices. So here are two special matrices we've learned about. Next I shall introduce some simple operations with matrices. The first of which is the transpose operation and that's very similar to what transposes do to vectors and after all vectors are just special cases of matrices. So let's uh, imagine that X is a 2 by 3 matrix, for instance this one up here. And if that is so, then x transpose, sometimes called just x dash, will actually be a 3 by 2 matrix. So the row and the column dimensions have just changed. So we can already create some space to write this result here. And now we have two columns and three rows. So how do we translate the elements from the x matrix to to the x prime or xt matrix, well the first row will become the first column, 2, 3 and 1. And the second row, this one here, will become the second column, 0, 2 and 1. Okay, so that's a very common, very useful and important operation uh, we can undertake with matrices. The next operation I shall introduce is that of a scalar multiplication. Again, that has its equivalent in the vector world. And what we have to introduce here in addition to, to a particular matrix is that we need a scalar. Let's call that alpha here. It's a 
factor or scalar and that will be a real number. So if you have this real number and we have a matrix called say the same X matrix we have been dealing with then alpha X alpha times X has the following typical element. So we use the curly brackets. The typical element will be alpha times x i j. Okay, we take our typical element of x x i j and just multiply it with that factor alpha. So, by example, three times x will then end up in uh, six nine three in the first row and zero six three in the second row. Okay, so you should see that clearly. Uh, how that is 3 times x using the same x as above. Next we will look at another property for a matrix, uh, in particular whether a matrix is symmetric or not. Now this is a property which only square matrices can have. So what does it mean for a square matrix to be symmetric? A matrix is symmetric if and only if the matrix itself, X, is equal to its transpose, or vice versa, the transpose equal to X. So let's look at a couple of examples. So here's a particular X matrix, so now we have a different X matrix, and that would be unequal to its transpose, because the transpose would have the twos on the diagonals, but uh, would have different off-diagonal elements. What about this matrix? Why? Uh, no, let me change that to to another value. So first row 2, 4, second row 4, 2. X prime of that will be again exactly the same if you apply the transpose operation and that means that Y is equal to yt. So that x is not symmetric but y is. The last operation we're going to tackle in this clip is uh, the addition and subtraction of matrices. What we need is two matrices with identical dimensions. So that means both have to, the number of rows has to be the same for both matrices and the number of columns has to be the same. What these are is really doesn't matter as long as they are the same. So here we will work with an example. So let A be this matrix and B be this matrix here. Both of these are two by three matrices and therefore have identical dimensions. So we can go ahead considering any addition or subtraction operation with these two. So let's start with A plus B. Turns out uh, addition and subtraction are commutative, so we can interchange A and B. So actually addition is, subtraction isn't. Uh, so A plus B is the same as B plus A and we just add up the respective elements here. 2 and 4 6, 3 and negative 1 is 2, 1 and negative 3 is negative 2 and so forth. You can complete the remainder of these matrices, of this matrix. So we can also think about linear combinations. So these will combine addition, subtraction and uh, scalar multiples. So for instance, uh, let matrix C be equal to 2 times A plus 3 times B. So if A and B uh, are 2 by 3 matrices, as they have to be, they have to be identical have identical dimensions. Each of them pre-multiplied with a factor doesn't change the dimension, so they both stay 2 by 3 matrices, and then the result will be a 2 by 3 matrix. So let's do this calculation. Let's look at the first element. So we need 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 times 4, which is 12. So altogether that would be 4 plus 12 equal to 16. Let's look at an, another element here. So 2 times 0 
plus 3 times 6 would be 18. 0 plus 18 is 18 and we can complete that matrix in a similar fashion and we get this result. You should also note that if you want to calculate C transpose that turns out to be the same as 2 times A transpose plus 3 times B transpose. So in an addition uh, the transpose of, of the result is the same as the sum of the two individual transposes. Finally let us consider these typical elements again here in the simple addition a typical element of the result will just be the addition of each typical element in the same place of the respective matrices and here for this linear combination we would have 2 times a i j plus 3 times b i j again we are combining elements in the same positions